Today's discussion, we are talking about the drug rapamycin. And rapamycin has historically been used as a drug for immunosuppression, kidney transplant. But today's context, I want to talk about rapamycin as a life extension slash anti-aging type of drug. So rapamycin is a drug that received FDA approval back in 1999. And historically, it's been used as a immunosuppressant. So when clients underwent a kidney transplant, they would take this medication, oftentimes in conjunction with taking other drugs such as cyclosporine and corticosteroids, and they would take rapamycin so that their body doesn't reject the kidney. So in terms of anti-aging, uh, I believe it to be probably one of the best emerging anti-aging therapeutics, uh, along with other drugs such as like NAD and the GLP-1s, the GIPs, methylene blue is another great one, uh, and so is decidinib. The discovery of rapamycin is actually rather interesting. So back in the 60s, researchers were, they're wondering, they're curious why inhabitants of Easter Island, they don't get tetanus, despite the fact that they walk around barefoot, they live barefoot, and you know, they've spent centuries there and yet tetanus doesn't affect them. So they evaluate soil samples and the soil samples, they, they unfortunately, they didn't find anything about tetanus, but what they found was a bacteria that produces rapamycin. And it did this as a mechanism of survival because that product it made, that the bacteria made, which is rapamycin, it has very potent anti-inflammatory, antifungal and antimicrobial properties. And it did that as a way of survival. So to pay homage to rapamycin, the researchers named it rapamycin because it comes from the, the Polynesian translation, rapanu, and I probably butchered that, it's R-A-P-A-N-U-I, but rapanu essentially translates to Easter Island. So as an immunosuppressant, rapamycin works through a few mechanisms of action. First, it inhibits T cell activation, and it also inhibits antibody production, Hence why it was used for kidney transplants, because you don't want to build antibodies to a foreign organ in your body. It also inhibits various lymphatic growth factors, and it's a very, very extremely potent anti-inflammatory, but its principal mechanism of action is through the downregulation of mTOR signaling. And this is where rapamycin gets its purported anti-aging and life extension effects from, through the downregulation of mTOR signaling. And by downregulating mTOR signaling, essentially you can slow down what's called geroconversion. And geroconversion is just a nice way of saying healthy cells becoming old, senescent cells. And when cells become old and senescent, essentially they don't perform good, they express high levels of dysfunction, and they're extremely pro inflammatory. And being very pro inflammatory, they can destroy themselves and they can also affect the cells in their immediate neighboring environment. Think of it this way, beta cells of the pancreas, they're the primary, they're the producers of insulin. If we could extend the life of beta cells, essentially we could prevent or delay the onset of diabetes. But that's just one example. Since rapamycin can affect a multitude of cells throughout the body, by delaying senescence from a whole body perspective, we can essentially slow down aging from a cellular level. In terms of dosing, well, unfortunately, we don't quite know yet what the best strategy is, as there's really no literature in terms of using rapamycin for life extension applications. So we don't know if doing a short-term administration, a short bolus, like say four weeks, five weeks, and then you're done. We don't know if that's the best, or if doing intermittent cyclical fashion is good, say one month on, three months off, or if just being on it long-term indefinitely is the best method. I've heard of different methods from different providers. I tend to err on the side of caution and take it a little more conservatively. I think doing like two milligrams, three milligrams once a week for a month on and two, three months off, that tends to be very safe strategy and it errs on the side of caution.